Um, started drinking alcohol at the age of 14 years old. Um, had some, I guess I wasn't really a nervous kid, but I had some stuff going in my life that I uh, um, was kind of running from, I guess. And uh, so I grew up in a very uh, conservative home, um, right wing kind of Christian home. And, um, you know, and, and that's great. And I'm not here to, to say that that's not cool. That's just, I'm only telling you my experience. So I, I can only share where, how it impacted me and, and how I moved forward in my life. So I had a lot of guilt and shame in that in that particular scenario that I grew up in. And and that's how I interpret it. So I just want to make that clear. Um, but this is how I interpreted what I heard and what um, and what I did later in life to cope with it. So I had a lot of shame and uh, guilt on, on how to live. You know, you hear messaging in your family of uh, what is the way to, the way to go. And that was a piece of it. But I think also maybe I was um, wired um, with to be attracted to alcohol, maybe I'm not sure because I know I'd never forget the first day I tried it. I was 14 years old with my buddies. We we're at a quarry um, near to the house. We used to go there swimming and stuff. It was like an old dugout quarry where they would take the rock and process it into other stuff, like asphalt or whatever. So they fill it up with water and we used to hang out. And someone brought some booze one night and I like fell in love the first time I tried it. It was just, um, I don't know if you guys can relate to this experience when, when you try it and it just bring, it just bring a relief to my brain that I had never felt before. Um, it relaxed me in a way that I'd never felt. And uh, I, I wrote a letter recently, cause I just, uh, I'll, I'll get into a little bit of what I've been going through uh, recently, but I wrote a letter recently to alcohol. I was in a 20 day uh, treatment program outpatient. Um, I'd relapsed on October 4th of 2021. And I've been in a seven year recovery process, some victories and, and stretches of sobriety, but really not taking it as serious as I should have. So that's, that'll be a little bit later in the story as well. But when I uh, started using alcohol, it was kind of because I was living a dual life. I lived a life that um, I thought in, in my parents wanted me to live, but I also lived the life that I kind of wanted to live as well. So I lived two pathways and it was very confusing as a kid because I wanted to please them. I wanted to please them, make, you know, make them happy and make them proud of me and all those kind of things that we do as children. But I also had some questions and I found that I couldn't live up to the lifestyle that I um, was being taught. Um, and there was nothing wrong with that. I mean, my mom and dad were such loving people, great people. Um, my mom's passed since, but my dad's still with me. He's 86 years old. He's down in California visiting my brother, so I miss him. I just dropped him off. He, I'm his main caregiver here, but I, phenomenal people. Just for me, alcohol was a, a real coping mechanism. Um, I did it because I was a bit shy, I guess. So to meet and talk to girls back then, it was kind of like, gave me a little bit of swagger because I was a little bit nervous. Um, socially, I wasn't quite sure where I fit in in the world. I was, you know, as an athlete, but I was also kind of on the outskirts because I didn't want to get too close to people because I was told that, you know, if you get into a certain crowd, it may not go well for you. And so I really w I wasn't good at relationships as well because I didn't know my place in life. So I, I lived that way till uh, probably around 30 years old and I made a decision that I had to live and be honest to my authentic self and who I am. Well, that's when my life changed for the better, but I also was using alcohol quite a bit in my 20s. And even when I got married, I got married when I was 32. And um, I worked a ton. I was in the car business at the time and I worked, you know, 12 hour days, six days a week sometimes. and. It was just a coping mechanism for me to get through. So I have the aspect of, I think, um, some mental health issues that I had going on, but also I may have some genetic um, predisposition to alcohol, I think. Mm -hmm. Nobody in my family, my parents don't drink. They never drank. Um, so I didn't wasn't exposed to it growing up. But I found out that some people in my family have had mental health issues and also had some alcohol issues as I come came out and told my story and was being honest so um yeah that's been my story for my life and 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 i, I my wife approached me about uh, it was September, uh, november of 2014 she came to me and she was very concerned about my drinking and i was very unhappy i had it in 2010 i had um uh, very very deep deep depression going on in my life 
um, really not suicidal, but just really questioning why I was here on this planet. What was my purpose? And really lost. I didn't find any uh, value as being a, a husband, a dad, employee, and, and uh, just losing a lack of um, enjoyment in my life. I was a you know, I'm a huge sports fan. I didn't even enjoy watching sports. I didn't follow my teams. I, I just let everything kind of slip. And I was going spiraling into a deep, deep depression and really anxious. But coming to learn that, you know, alcohol helped me go down that pathway because it's obvious a, a depression, a depressant. And um, so I, I didn't really know. And nobody talked about mental health to me growing up. I'm going to be 54 next week. And so these conversations weren't happening. So. As a kid, you know, I just sucked it up. And I'm, you know, when you're in sports, you hear, you know, get up, don't cry. Guys don't cry, you know, suck it up, get up. Um, or if you feel, you know, you're having a bad day, well, that's too bad. You get your pants on, you go to work and you support your family. There's no time off for that kind of stuff. Yeah. You just do what you gotta do, right? So the, the old school mentality is, is kind of how I grew up. And until I went into a recovery process and started, um, seeing psychologists and seeing uh, counselors and digging into the real reason why I drank alcohol was was um, eye-opening for me. But I still wasn't ready to commit, to be honest with you, until October 5th, 2021 this year, I went to the treatment program starting November 1st. And that's where um, I made the commitment finally Finally, it took me a while. I'm not too bright. I got <laughs> knocked me in the head a few times, and but I got to a place where I went to an inpatient, uh, outpatient program. It was life changing. Um, a few things have come up for me is meditation is a big, big part of my life for the past four or five. Very grounding, and, and it's teaching me to um, be live in the moment. I lived a lot in the past. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of um, anger about my past and the traumas that I went through as a child. Uh, for myself, how I interpreted the world, and that's kind of how what happened to me. Um, and feeling guilty about living the way I did because I wasn't honest with people, which is one of the values that I held uh, other people accountable to, but I didn't hold myself accountable. To. And it's funny, the things that were hard on people on team tend to be the things that we are not that great at, I find. Um, so I, I overcompensated in making other people accountable and honest, and I wasn't that way myself. So. I had to come out. I'm honest. I, I'm. I was. So I did also a 20-day uh, posting on YouTube. Uh, every day that I went to uh, treatment, I posted about it and I put it on my Facebook. I put it on um, YouTube post as well as Instagram, Twitter. I mean, everywhere. I, I let everybody know what was going on with me. There's no secrets anymore. And I finally have come to a place that I can um, say I'm an alcoholic and not feel real guilt and shame around that anymore so it's taken me a long time my story has been a 40-year journey uh, up until this point and um, thank god you know I, I finally did it for myself because you know i don't know mm. if you guys have ever been to aa or know much about aa I, i'm not an aa person but um the meetings that i went to and, and on their coins to say to thine own self be true is kind of a model that I, I start with. I have a, a cue card in my truck and when I feel like I have a craving, I read my 10 reasons why I don't want to drink. The number one e reason is to thine own self be true because I was lying to myself, number one. And I couldn't get straight. I couldn't get sober without being honest with me. Right? Until yeah. I yeah. wanted it for myself, Absolutely. there was no way it was going to happen. So I, I did right. use my family, use my wife that type of thing and um, stuck around and uh, things I'm not proud of doing. But I had to be honest now, you know, they know everything and that's, it's been freeing for me. That's really been freeing for me. So um, to give you a little bit of background about why I started Sober Athletic Wear, um, I wanted to give back to people. I wanted to change the conversation surrounding um, addiction and mental health. And for me, uh, my addiction, I think stems a lot from mental health. Um, am I addicted to alcohol? Yeah, but I'm more addicted to the fact that I used it as a coping mechanism. Um, I haven't had a drink now. To, I'm going to be 97 days today since I've had my last drink. And have Congratulations. I yeah, thank you, man. Let's I've, go, I've, man. Let's go. Yeah, so this is my new streak that I've been on. And I didn't keep track in the past because I was afraid to fail. And I failed so many mm. times I felt the shame of that. So I didn't want to have a, a sober date. And I used it as a crutch to drink because... I thought, well, I made a slip. Oh, I made a slip. And, you know, and 
Well, I got real about it and made a commitment to a day and saying, this is the day that I'm going to do it. And this is moving forward what I'm going to do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's still scary. It's still scary to think of every day. But, you know, we live one day at a time in, in the situations that we're in. So each day, you know, I do my meditation. I do my gratitude journal. I do my prayers. And I set out for the day. And uh, at night, I do the same. And uh, I just say thank you for today, for getting through it. And, um, and, and that Absolutely. gratitude now has really, really helped me and, and changed my mindset. And working on my mental health has been a big, big part of that. So, um, so yeah, that the, the logo that uh, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it. If you're looking up or if you're listening on a podcast later, you won't be able to see it, but you can look it up at soberathleticwear.com and see the logo. It's just so yes. I used to have sober athletic wear because I thought I wanted to soften it for people because some people may feel intimidated to wear sober on their shirt. But then I said, well, that's not for those people. It's for the people who need it to wear it, to get them through a day. I put on this shirt today and I'm going to stay sober today. If that's one mm. person that it helps, then that's all worth doing all the work for it. Um, and I want to change the word sober. What does sober mean? Well, on my website, it's it comes from Greek and it means to be calm, to be level headed, to thinking straight. So when you get sober, obviously that's what you do. You're not thinking the way you used to. And an addictive mind is, is a curious thing. Um, right. You know, you're, you're thinking is off mm -hmm. and um so when you're getting sober you can get sober from anything so i have a hashtag that i use sober from it could be food it could be sex it could be drugs alcohol right. shopping it could be whatever it is for you um we're all getting sober from something you know the mm. mental health crisis that's going on in the world now is tragic it 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 it's just as a pandemic as COVID is to us. It's people are dying left, right, and center from overdoses. People are suffering yep. violence from loneliness and mental health. And it's hard stuff. Yeah. So those are the people yeah. I'm targeting. And, and I want them to know guys like us who have gone through it. We love them and care for them. And we want to be there for it. So when they, when I see a sober logo or someone wants to wear a sober logo, it makes me smile because I know it's doing something for them to get them by and it lets them know that they're cared for and loved and someone is looking out for them and so that word is my mission to change the stigma and connotation around it and that's yeah. why we chose it that's kind of my back Troy, man no man i do that was that was amazing right there uh it was 10 to 15 minutes right there uh you really you really hit me hard right there in the heart uh, when you were talking about your story um, regarding really trying your hardest to, to please your parents. And I mean, I, I, I wrote a book and that's a lot about what I talk about in, in, the, in the double life. I literally talk about that in my story. Um, and again, I'm not here to talk about myself, of course, but I, 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 I relate to everything you just said so much. Like, I don't think you understand. Yeah, well, it's the same same for me, too. Right. I mean, we all grew up in that toxic masculinity that that's that's all our parents knew. So that's all they knew. Right. And I mean, it's not the best they could. right? I Absolutely. But, you know, one thing that I really love that you said was it took for you to admit to yourself because we have a saying yeah. that we use a lot on untapped keg and we talk about how you can lead the horse to water you can't make them drink it and that's what this is but we say going sober is the most selfless selfish decision that you can make it's you mm. have to make it for yourself and it's going to benefit everybody around you right but Absolutely. if you are not making it for yourself then you're not making it for the right reasons and you are mm -hmm. it's not going to take hold and hearing your journey to get to that point is thank you for being vulnerable and yeah. sharing your story you're you know i, I we awesome. both relate to you so much <laughs> i think that there's so many people out there that also are going to relate to this as well yeah well, i appreciate it because I, you know like it's guys like you know 